Olá pessoal, boa noite. Hello everyone, good evening. Good evening to everyone. It's very good to have you all here. We're just gonna wait for one more minute, perhaps two, and then we are gonna make a start on the tonight's lecture. I want to quickly also apologize. This lecture normally is normally given on the Saturday night. Yesterday I had um, I was suffering with pretty bad hay fever, and honestly, it wouldn't be too productive to have this lecture yesterday. So instead, we are having it today. So that's exactly the reason why. Why we wait? Let's just really. Trying to connect, trying to free our ourselves from any fixed specific thoughts that we might have had throughout the day. Let's just start to get into the right energy, the right emotions for this, this opportunity, for this moment we'll be making a start very shortly I'm just trying to find the page that I need and very shortly We'll make it start. There you go. Okay, very good. So perhaps then let's all close our eyes so we can make our official start of our lecture tonight. I hope you guys are able to hear me properly, you're able to see me properly. Um, so yeah, let's close our eyes. Give yourself a good, deep, relaxing breath. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Trying to find yourself in the moment, right now. And in the moment, we are also now going to focus our attention. We're going to focus our mind on our Creator. In whatever form the Creator exists for you. Let's feel part of this Creator. Let's belong and let's feel that we do belong as part of everything that surrounds us. The good and the bad, the happiness and the sad, the joy and the distress, the light and the dark, we are sons and we are daughters of this wonderful Creator that offers us all the time, no matter the circumstances, unconditional love, unconditional love. He is patient. Is all goodness, all fairness. And tonight we gather to celebrate, to learn, to go deeper within yourselves or ourselves, to try within our best possibilities, our current limitations, to reach a high understanding of our role 
in our current planet, on our role in our families, within our group of friends, in our societies. So we are then used as essential tools for the transformation that we so desperately need. And the good news is that the transformation that we all need is taking place as we speak in every single one of us, in every home, in every family, in every heart, we are seeking for more. That God bless us for this lecture tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> so thanks all for this uh, initial prayer. Um, definitely your good energy was absolutely felt. I, I could feel all of you guys connected. And this is amazing feeling, really. And so tonight, um, we'll be having the opportunity to talk, to reflect, to understand perhaps better um, a topic which is uh, so relevant for the current times that we live and is the ben beneficence. Beneficence. The, I've actually prepared this lecture based on two books. I prepared this lecture based on the Gospel according to Spiritism. I've got here the, the Portuguese version of it, but probably you guys can all find the English translation of this book uh, very easily um, uh, on Google. And I've also have used the Spirits book. Again, of course, the English version of it. Uh, I will be talking today on English on the Spirits book about the question 918. I will be going through specifically the content and what that question is later on. But just so if you guys want to keep some notes for further reading later on, uh, feel free to do so. We actually even recommend sometimes. Uh, the Gospel According to Spiritism, we're going to be studying tonight, chapter 13, 1, 3, and the item 11. Right? Again, if you want to make a small note, for your own sake, feel free to do so. Okay? And that specific item 11 of the chapter 13 on the Gospel according to Spiritism has on its title uh, ben Beneficence, which is an equivalent word to the compassion feeling, right? The sentiment of compassion. So the, the Gospel says, the act, the act of beneficence in this world, my friends, gives you happiness of the heart, being the purest and the sweetest delight, which neither remorse nor indifference can perturb. So, let's pay attention to the specific call, the specific content, which put it very clearly that the beneficence is actually where we should seek happiness from. Is the way or the act by which we can conquer places, we can conquer a state of being, a state of mind, a state of heart, a feeling, which is the real sustainable happiness that we all seek for. Right. And in talking about ben beneficence, it is impossible to talk about beneficence without talking about charity. And in fact, often in our lectures, in our philosophy, the spiritist philosophy, the word or this expression or the concept of charity is, is widely used. In fact, we are always spiritist, or everybody that actually seeks for spiritual development will encounter across many other different uh, virtues the 
charity as the ultimate achievement of the virtues or the ultimate achievement or state of being of an evolved soul that we all so um, no. seriously strive for. So the gospel also says a little bit further down the same item 11, the sublime word, charity, the sublime word which synthesizes all virtues. So we think charity, actually what he, the, the gospel is teaching us is that charity really just summarizes, it bundles it all together. So charity is actually the byproduct, is the effect of us having our all-rounded virtues developed. And as I develop further our virtues, of course, the more I'm evolved on various virtues in which I'm going to be explaining a bit more about, the more I advance in my ability to be charitable, the more I advance my ears to properly hear someone, my eyes to not just look at someone from a pure visual aspect, but trying to see beyond the sometimes poker face that we all sometimes come with these masks in our society when we, when we live through our jobs, our group of friends, there is a lot of hidden suffering when we interact with people. So the more we evolve in those virtues, more we become aware, more those hidden sufferings start to become visible to us because what's changing is not our physical eyes. Our ability to see the light, the colors, all physical impulses only impresses our, our physical eyes. But what actually enables us to see beyond the physical body, to see beyond the physical smile, is really our ability to evolve in our moral values. What's within our hearts what triggers us to, to actually get out of bed and what drives us in that specific day. Is it the vanity that drives us? Is it greed that drives us? When I say vanity, I mean, of course, these inflate, in, inflated prides either towards who I am in society or in my appearance excessively, you know, valuing things that are purely physical. When I get up from bed, do I have in my mind and in my heart straight from the first minute I wake up? Do I have greed? The excessive fixation in the material acquisitions, in the possession of goods and things, is that where our heart is at? Do I, when I, when I wake up first thing in the morning and the first interactions I have in my, in my family, perhaps at my workplace, or perhaps when we all and all, uh, I guess, gather together in the spirit center, do I have in my heart truly impatience, intolerance? A lot of us, even though we, it's not joyful or pleased to recognize we still have a lot of impatience and intolerance against the difference, against what I see in others that I don't think is right or I don't like it. We still have that. So going a little bit back again to the main core fundamental principle of this lecture, which is the beneficence the charity. As I was saying before, these greater virtues are the byproduct of a being that is well developed or a being that is going through a process of development. 
But it's also necessary if we are talking here about the development of certain core virtues. It is absolutely fundamental for us to shine the light in the opposition or the contrary of the virtues, which is exactly what for most of us we are way more familiar with, unfortunately. But that's okay, because we also have to be able to recognize how small we are, right? How fragile we can be. So it is important, as I was saying, to be able to recognize our moral vices, the things, the habits, the sentiments that makes us trip over. And even though we really try and we speak out of our mouth, great things fantastic values, we talk about great energy, we talk about um, influencing others in a positive way. What it is the reality though, and that's probably where I would propose that we shine the line tonight. It is that often, or more often than we'd like to, we actually fall again on our moral vices. What are these moral vices I'm referring to more specifically? Selfishness. Selfishness. Isn't the selfishness, in fact, the very opposite of a great virtue that could be represented by the humility? Yeah? Couldn't it be the great virtue that is underpinning, or the opposite of, of the virtue that is underpinning the fundamental sentiment of, ben of benevolence, of charity that we're talking about? Because if I am selfish, or I think selfishly, I act selfishly, it's going to be very hard for me to see beyond my own little world, my own well-being, my own needs, my own pain. Because all I really care is about myself, isn't it? And even though it is quite hard to... And recognize because it, it goes deep deep inside our own uh, self reflection. We still are stuck with a great degree of selfishness. We're still really stuck with a great degree of selfishness. It is true, therefore, or true though, however, that we have made fantastic improvements. A lot of us, and if you are right now at home listen to this, uh, listening to these words, uh, words, you probably can think of examples in aspects of your life or your being or even your relationship with the people that you normally live with in which you can find examples where you have act with great virtues. You have act with patience. You have act with acceptance with inclusiveness. I guarantee we all have examples of these uh, good virtues. But it's also very true and it's also very important at the same time to not be misled by the feeling that we are doing or behaving or acting sometimes according to these great virtues that we fakely develop this sensation or this understanding that we've done enough. We have already evolved so much from where we used to be at. That is a very easy and common trap that we all fall into. Oh, without an exception. And I guess it is a need, it's a need for this discussion tonight to shine a light on that aspect. Right, because if you want to really develop the great foundations and actually a sustainable, ongoing, continuous development of these foundations, of these foundation or, or the fundamental virtues that as a consequence create this charitable state of mind, it is necessary for me to recognize myself is still limited, determined, uh, definitely with lots of good intentions, but it's still limited. And there's nothing to be ashamed of recognizing that. 
There is nothing to be ashamed of understanding how small we still are. Nothing, in fact. In fact, this is the true or one of the ways that we can exercise our humility, being humble about where we are, what have we achieved, and what we would like to achieve moving forward. Right? So, the impatience, the arrogance that often we display, it is necessary in order for us to reach the benevolence, to reach the, the charitable attitude, to really leave what this chapter or item 11 said to us at the beginning, the act, the act of, of beneficence in this world, my friends, gives you happiness of the heart. It means if we could truly live most of the times, the majority of the times, into exercising charity, exercising the good to others, giving more than receive, giving without any expectation of reward in any level, we would experience happiness in a different level. We would experience happiness in a different frequency, in a different intensity, and probably in a way that most of us only really experience rarely. Why? Because we don't normally exercise our charitable heart consistently. And the reason why it's important, and I'm stressing that point again, is that it is pointless for us to be talking what is exactly about a, charit a charitable heart, what is charity, what is truly actually qualifies someone with a, a true good heart. Because in essence, we all know that. We all know that. And in fact, in case we don't, let me refresh on our minds exactly on the question 918 from the Spirit Book. The question is, by what signs can we recognize a man as having accomplished the progress that will raise him in the spirit hierarchy? So what signs can I see in, in someone to tell that this spirit has accomplished its progress? And the answer is, I'm only going to read part of the answer. The truly virtuous man is he who practices the law of justice, love and charity in its greatest purity. If he, if he interrogates his conscience in regard to the acts accomplished by him, he will ask himself whether he has done nothing wrong, whether he has done all the good in his power, and whether no one has cause to complain of him, on, and whether he has done to others all that he would wish others would do to him. Can we see? It is really only possible to reach this level of evolution that we all seek for, for obvious reasons. If not just we do the good, every time we can, but actually we cease, we stop, we halt to do the bad. And he is the, is the Achilles tendon for most of us. Do, am I talking here on the level of bad as real badness that most of us tend to give examples when we are uh, discussing together? Let's say, I don't know, really mean bad for someone or destroy someone else's life or, or kill someone. Surely, thanks God, a great majority of the world's population uh, has already freed themselves. We've already freed them ourselves from these really raw badness. However, it's just a matter for us to be interested enough in going a little bit deeper, one level deeper, we're going to find ourselves in the next level, or perhaps two layers down, on a different level of the badness. It's so easy for us when we are in a group of friends, discussing, having fun with people, 
to actually say things that we shouldn't say. Make comments about someone else's life, which actually we shouldn't really engage on. Because it's not going to help that person. It's not going to propagate any information that's going to actually make that person's life a little bit better. And all we're doing is just perhaps gossiping. And that's the easiest of all, let's say, the common badness of the modern life. Right? And that's our role every time we talk about the charity and being good and evolving our soul. Is really that instead of just understanding what do we want to reach, the clear concepts on where we want to get and how does it look like, we have to also at the same time equivalently to shine a light on the things that really can make us, makes us uncomfortable. Because otherwise, all we're doing is just faking a little bit. We come here, we speak about great things, we call, we call ourselves people that are in the search of a higher evolved soul. And we may fall into this trap, like I said before, that we just feel good about it. And we become hypocrites. We become hypocrites. Because we say something, we preach something, we say we're going to do, and we in front of people, especially in examples like I'm doing right now, of course, I myself carry right now from what I'm doing a lot of responsibility. A lot of responsibility. Because within my own conscious, either on the conscious level or unconscious level, my spirit and my soul knows that I know what I should and what I should not do. Therefore, the moment I have the knowledge, at the same time, I have the obligation. And there is nothing really to be scared about this process. Knowledge, moral obligation. Knowledge, moral obligation. There isn't any formidable God that's going to request a report from ourselves when we leave this life and actually ask each one of us, what have you done? And if you haven't been a good boy or a good girl, I will punish you. This is a very unlawful, unfair, godly concept. And doesn't really represent what the true spirituality is about and how it works. There is nobody punishing you or me. What it is, is our own conscience. It's like if you were to close your eyes, trying to sleep at night, and something keeps you awake. Is that exactly that feeling that within our own consciousness just speak the truth to ourselves and puts us in any place, any state of mind that we have ourselves aligned to throughout our whole life, our whole existence. So there is nothing unfair about just, about just harvesting what I've planted. I'm just harvest, harvesting what I've planted. So, we are reaching now the end of this discussion. And there's a couple of things that I want to just re-emphasize. Let's be true to ourselves when we are talking about evolution of our moral values. Let's police ourselves in a productive way, in a productive, not in a destructive way. What I mean by productive way of policing ourselves is watching what we think, what we're about to say, what are the feelings and emotions that are creating this prompt desire to say something or to act according to something else or to judge someone by its appearance or by its uh, costumes. That's 
the productive policement that I'm suggesting that we really take it seriously. Because if we take this as a constructive and productive cycle of observance of a behavior that we dislike, that a behavior that we are more than convinced is not going to lead me to any progression. And if I observe that and I'm able to identify that, and very lovely, I'm able to actively change that in my conscience, in my mind, in my heart, in my feelings. I'm practicing the charitable heart day after day after day. Because the more I reduce my vices, I just literally replace. It's like a balance. It's like a scale. If I reduce my vices in replacement, I evolve. I progress on my virtues. Therefore, the more virtues I have, the more charitable, the more benevolent, the, 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 the more I will care for something else that is not myself. So, I hope that this discussion was valuable to, to all of you guys. Once again, I thank you for, 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 your, for you having watching I guess, these words, uh, this lecture. And I truly, from the deep of my heart, I wish you all a very good week, a fantastic start of this warm few days of this coming week that's going to be all very good. Uh, for everybody in Melbourne, enjoy our freedom now that we have responsibly. Remember in everything that we do to look after not just at our own interests, but in the society that we live in. Okay? So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being here with us, with us. And let's now in this moment close our eyes for our final prayer, for our final vibration. <clears throat> in this moment, we I would like us to be together mentally, be together sentimentally, connect our hearts, our intentions, and let's send vibrations of love, strong, deep, natural love, motherly love, to all our brothers and our sisters that are suffering in any degree. The ones that are suffering the lack of material things, the lack of money, the lack of resources, to have a dig a, 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 a digging life. Let's vibrate and send the energies of love, acceptance for those who are suffering mental health problems. And we know, especially at the difficult times that we are going through right now in the whole world, they are rather quite quite a lot of people in this state at the moment. So we all should now imagine that we are hugging these people, really deeply hugging them, caring for them. And let's imagine that this light that we see right in front of us right now, of pure love, is able to calm their central nervous systems down, calm their thoughts, Calm their distresses, calm their minds, in order to give them a very good night's sleep tonight. Let's send this energy of love for all of those in the prisons, jails. Let's especially send our love to the politicians around the globe. Send our love and our positive vibrations to the new president of the United States, to all the people that are actually going to be in power in this country. 
And at the same time, let's also propagate this energy of love, love, uh, love throughout our neighborhoods, our own homes, our houses. Feeling the whole space. And finally, keeping ourselves full of this unconditional, warm, motherly love. Thanks God, thanks Jesus. Once again, everyone, good night to all of you, and we talk very soon. Bye-bye.